welcome to Oxford Church near Lexington, Virginia. Uh, I'm Horace Dowdy in the pulpit of Oxford today. And this is the service for January 24, the year 2021. And the title of the sermon is Low Profile Enemies. The scripture comes from 2 Samuel. So the battle began in the forest of Ephraim, and the Israeli troops were beaten back by David's army. There was a great slaughter, and 20,000 men laid down their lives that day. The battle raged all across the countryside, but more men were lost and slain by the forest then were killed in battle. Human beings spend a staggering amount of energy and time engaged in unnecessary battles. Something inside us must enjoy conflict. General Robert E. Lee recognized this tendency when he said, it's a good thing that war is so terrible, else we would love it too much. We are often told to be careful in choosing our enemies and to avoid any battle which cannot be won or is not worth the effort. It is excellent advice, but rarely prevails. The story in our lesson ends with these surprising words. Thousands of soldiers died that day, but the tangled forest claimed more lives than were killed in combat. Those commanders were keen warriors. Why did they overlook the danger of the terrain? We don't know. But to this day, the same mistakes are being made. Too many people allow political leaders or professors or the media to declare which danger we should address or which enemy we should fight. In all fairness, sometimes they get it right, but not always. We in America or in the world, we are facing a serious epidemic. Without question, it is an enemy of high profile. We're wise to recognize the danger and to take defensive action. But we face a perplexing problem. What is the best way to deal with it? Experts disagree and leave us wondering. In this Bible lesson, neither King David nor his adversaries correctly assessed the real danger, the true danger. They could easily have removed the battle onto open plains. They chose not to. Disaster and death followed. This sermon is a call to wisdom. Sometimes the greatest danger may be a low-profile enemy. I hold in hearty respect those voices today who warn about the long-range effects of our battle with COVID. It is certainly possible that extreme lockdowns can bring unintentional suffering. We must be wise, else the remedy cause more casualties than the disease. The forest in David's day took more lives than the combat. Worry is a low-profile enemy, but it can take your life. I have watched people die from worry, but it never appears on the death certificate. And yet, worry 
is deliberately promoted and produced vigorously on nearly every news cast. The antidote to worry is trust in God, your loving Father. If you find that you are a worrier, try this. Every day, do a good deed for someone else. It will surprise you, especially if you reach out and grasp the hand of God at the same time. You will be of good cheer, as our Lord advised so often. You will exit the danger of a common forest. If you are suffering loneliness, another low-profile danger, remember, you are not the only one. Among your own list of acquaintances, quite a number feel lonely, as you do. Now, in our day of technology, that is easy to correct. Make a call. Send a text. Write an email. Your contact may be exactly what that person craves and needs. Both of you will be lifted out of the forest. Always be aware that you are never far from the friendly love of God who made you, no matter how lonely you may feel. I am baffled that another unseen enemy is rarely mentioned, or at least I don't hear it mentioned. Our national debt. It has grown astronomically. It is not a mirage that will fade away on its own. It is a forest so dense, it should be considered dangerous. And yet, like those commanders of old, our leaders seem to be blissfully unaware. Why? They have other concerns. I am no biblical prophet, but I do have some experience in the business world. And I know, as you know, when our nation cannot meet the interest payments on our national debt, loans can be called. It could spell catastrophe for the stock market and the business world. When you consider how huge billions of dollars is the interest payment today. The danger of forfeiture is real. We ignore it at our peril. It's a tangled forest. Another unseen enemy creeps slowly but steadily into our culture. With a few notable exceptions, our heritage, our story, our history as a nation fades from memory. Such deprivation has consequences. If you don't know where you have been, it is extremely difficult to know where you are. I am understandably concerned when some of our national leaders simply cannot describe our nation's beginnings because they've never heard the story. They may be doomed to experiment with policies that have been tried before and failed with tragic results. Long ago, someone could have whispered in King David's ear, there are enemy soldiers out there, dangerous and threatening, but your biggest danger is the lush forest before you, looking so peaceful and shady and inviting. Take care, David. Move your troops to the open plain. In my small way, with this sermon, I encourage you, choose your battle. 
Consider all the consequences. Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Do you know who said that first? Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, we are grateful that we can be here again speaking to you as easily as we would communicate with a close human friend. Each of us, Lord, has our own way of visualizing you. We are grateful that you are the Heavenly Father who can sort out our requests even when they are so different. Some of us approach you, Lord, with the assurance that you are ready to comfort and to bless. Others are intimidated, thinking that you may be displeased, poised to condemn and to punish. But Lord, we are united in our common quest to understand ourselves and to strengthen our relationship with you, our maker. We recognize your power. You are more awesome than all the kings and princes and presidents of earth. We admit our dependence upon you. We are grateful that your protection never falters, even though we may turn toward you only when we are in trouble. Please, God, help us stay in contact, not because you need us, but because we need you. Hear our intercession for those we love, the life which is crippled by illness or disease, the heart which cannot find true love, the home where there is discord, the parent who is old and weak and confused, the young person who is restless and reckless. Help them, Lord, and guide us as we attempt to give them assistance. Grant our petitions and the others which rise in secret from praying hearts. Answer our needs in keeping with your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you for our sleeping earth, waiting to bring out the best of springtime. Thank you for putting us in this good world and for supplying us with sweet friends and daily pleasures. You've given us minds and muscles which work, direct our skills, so that we can produce pleasure for ourselves and for others. Please continue to safeguard us during this dangerous epidemic. Put your comforting arms around all who are suffering. We offer this prayer in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen.